thankfully, we change location and decide to include a second species of fish, a wahoo, in our search. We're gonna break out the heavy artillery. Weapon of choice. All right, I'm off. See ya. A flasher line is dropped, and our spear guns are attached to the boys. Eric cuts up the bait before Cameron takes the first big dive. Incredibly, he manages to descend to around 30 meters on his first attempt. And sure enough, he spots, off camera, the prize we've been looking for. I try to relax as much as possible before filling my lungs with air and diving down. This is my first attempt at such depths without oxygen. And while descending down isn't so difficult with my large fins, the pressure is excruciating. But visibility is poor, and growing accustomed to these conditions wastes valuable time. I've been under for almost a minute, and then a dog tooth. Unbelievably, I hit him, but my spear doesn't stick. By the time I breach, I've been under for over two minutes. <gasps> well, that's the first dog you've seen. I got a spear in him, but he got off. So, I mean, they're so strong. Just I hit him properly. Probably, probably shot from a bit too far, but he was very deep. And he shook it, shook it quickly, and he's gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to throw up, so. Are oh, you feeling sick? Yeah. And then the exhaustion and seasickness hit me. I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, you look great. Yeah. You look a little green. Yeah, that's what seasickness does to you, I think. Yeah. So, have you ever gotten seasick in the water like that? Uh, no. It's that blue water, since there's no reference. You don't know how far anything is, and your eyes just can't focus. It, it's very, very common yeah. for people to get seasick in the water like yeah. that. Let's run back up current. We'll do another drift. Right now, I can't think of anything I'd rather do less, but I'm not willing to give up yet. Seasick tablet, a banana. <laughs> so I'm not vomiting so much. Okay, so let's do it. Good. But the seasickness will soon be the least of my worries. When Cameron and I try to avoid another school of hungry silver tip sharks, whilst trying to catch our elusive prize. Still on the hunt for dogtooth tuna. But they're proving elusive. So we extend our search to Wahoo, another prized game fish that makes very good eating. Still feeling ill, I have to hurry and make my descent. There in the depths is a huge Wahoo circling the bait. but the fish is making a swim for it. I have to work quickly and at the same time try to keep my eye on him.
After a tough struggle, I managed to land my catch, feeling absolutely ecstatic. We're in the water for like two minutes, and this wahoo is called a wahoo swam in. And I nailed it. It just went. Like a maniac. And it's not, it's not a massive one, is it? No, that's a perfect size. Good though. size, though. Probably 17 kilos, 16 oh, kilos. Look at it. Amazing. Awesome fish. Look at that. Fish, man. Woo. I love this fish. Spear out of here. All the fish go mental when this sort of stuff happens. A doggy came right up underneath and was just circling underneath us. We just needed to make sure we landed this in the boat so we let it go, but it means they're out there. The wahoo is put on ice for our journey back to Vermizi. Now for a dog tooth tuna for our lunch. And the smell of blood has attracted our old friends, the silver tips. Got this shark like a meter under the surface here. Literally, a meter, it's just here, right here. Cameron tries to repel them, but they're persistent. With so much unwanted attention, we'll have one shot at this. Cameron takes the plunge, leaving me to fend them off. And it's not long before he spots our prime target. A dog-toothed tuna 30 meters down, swimming along the rocky bank. Cameron needs to take his shot, and fast. Bullseye! And the boy above goes haywire. While Cameron makes his quick ascent, the dogtooth is immensely strong, and it pulls the boy under the water. Eventually the boy emerges, and Cameron goes in for the fight. After a long struggle, he manages to haul in our prize. Yes! <laughs> Woo! Look at that's, that, man. That's what we came for. That is a dog tooth tuna. <laughs> Do you that's, see how fast the sharks came after him? Oh my god, they're all over us. Right <laughs> underneath us right now is Shark Central. They're just circling like crazy. There's about, I'd say, seven or eight sharks below us right now. Cameron nailed that good shot, dude. That's unbelievable. <sighs> That's perfect dinner size right there. Oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> well done, man. Look that at the teeth cool. on that thing. That is amazing. It's got a small one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is a, we call this a puppy. That's a puppy. Yeah. It's a puppy tooth tuna. Any dog tooth, you saw how crazy they went. Yeah. Like any dog tooth you can get yeah. is, is a keeper, man. These are just such hard fish to get. So amazing. I love it. It's amazing. Good work. Woo! And our time is long overdue to get out of the water. I'm gonna turn that into something very, very, very tasty. Good work, dude. What well a done. fish, huh? That's why it's called the dog tooth tuna. Look at those teeth. I have absolutely no idea what this fish tastes like. Like I said, I've never tasted it before. But from what Cameron tells me and how he's described the flesh, there's about 4,000 things running through my head as to what I might cook with them. It's, it's, it's physically challenging, it's mentally challenging start throwing seasickness in there, which I hadn't anticipated. But anyway, unbelievably rewarding when you manage to get that in. Punch it. Incredible fish. Incredible fisherman.